Hello and welcome to Fire in the Belly. Today we'll have myself, Mighty Pete, and we're joined by the John Weberg. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent today. Wonderful, wonderful. Great to have you on, John. I mean, it's always a pleasure to meet new people. So you're you know, calling us all the way from the other side of the Atlantic. So uh, <laughs> always great. So to give our listeners a bit of background, so John is an American entrepreneur, top 1% consultant and business master. By the age of 24, he is a two-time self-published author and has worked with clients in 18 industries. He is widely considered to be a business growth, personal development, sorry, widely considered a business growth, personal development, and financial expert. He spends his time to help businesses scale profitably without outside capital. John, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for sparing the time today and coming on. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I hope we can give your audience something that they'll actually really, really enjoy. We'll see what we can do. Love it. So tell us, what does fire in the belly mean to John, first of all? Let's start on the easy ones. Fire in the belly is, for me, simply doing what you actually really want. Like, like deep inside, because I think so many people are so afraid, including when I was younger. I was kind of the same way, kind of not. Um, is, is people are afraid of what other people think. They're afraid of what they'll think after they do something. They're afraid of so many different factors. So they just keep themselves from doing what they actually want or, the, or they're just scared of like, I'm not going to succeed at it. I'm not going to whatever at it. So they just don't do what they actually truly desire. And then they end up not having a fire in the belly or they, just, they still do, but it's just this little fire that needs to be stoked and have some passion and fuel injected into it. Do you have it? Have you always had it? Where, where are you at with your fire in your belly? I think I've mostly always had it. So when I was, ever since I've been really young, my parents have always told me this. I've always kind of just done what I wanted to do. Again, that's not necessarily what they wanted, but it's kind of how I just, I've just operated. Of course, I was, a, I was still a pretty good kid, um, but I've always just known that usually what I'm doing, like uh, I'm pretty highly ethical. I know that's right. I know that's a smart thing to do. So I just go after it. Now, of course, I've made some plenty of mistakes, but I, I, I've usually figured this is usually the right journey. Most time I'd, I'd be right so I think I've always just had the passion because I, I've seen when I was growing up I came from a rougher background um there was just so many fake people not being themselves and so many so much lying and deception and weird stuff going on that I just wanted to um be myself because I was, I was sick of the noise around me um my parents went through a pretty rough divorce and I just was sick of the the bull and I'm like I'm going to always be myself, just be real. And then that kind of, as I got older, it got more and more extreme. So I'm a very, I'll say upfront exactly what I mean. Of course, I'll, I'll be nice about it, but I'll, I'm, I say what I mean. I, I, I be what I mean. I'm always myself. My brother often says, um, you are a character because I am a character. I am, I am a one of a kind and I just want to be myself because it's also the best way to live because then not just are you, you kind of living, you're, you're being who you are is you're being truthful to yourself because you're actually being who you actually really are. And it comes out, everything comes out much better that way. I was going to say, but I mean, it, it does take a dose of um, honesty in there. <laughs> a dose right. Of, you know, don't be offended by what I say, but I'm saying what I truly mean. Right. And not everyone can handle that. Right. Right. And, and what you do with that then is you figure out how to say it in the best way possible. Cause I, 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 I've came across that where like, People would maybe not like me. Some would like me for it, but some would not like me because I was so just upfront. I'm honest. I'm going to say exactly like in school, often in school, most kids, if any people from school hear this, most kids st still to this day don't like me from my, my age group. And one of the reasons I think is why is because I was just upfront if they were doing something or someone else was doing something that was like not cool or whatever, you know, I would immediately point it out. Um, so I've learned to do it in a more relaxed and persuasive way. So instead of just calling someone out, you go, hey, maybe do you think this could have been done a little bit differently? Or what if you did it like this? That'd be so much better. Um, so there's some different ways you can reroute it instead of just, just jumping down people's throats. I'm not, I now just poke, poke the tongue. I don't jump down people's throats. <laughs> I mean, you have, because I mean, I was going to say, do people get you? Because you've achieved a hell of a lot in a fairly, you know, fairly young period in your life. I'm not, you. you know, and I, I'm, I never like to say to people, God, you've done a lot, you know, the rest. It's like, cause you, but you have achieved a lot. And, but age also has everything to do with it, also nothing to do with it. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, how, how does it feel to have done so much and, and achieve so much and, and 
you know, such a wonderful period of time. Thank you very much for that comment. I appreciate that. It's it's usually when I get, especially if I, like, I go to conferences and stuff, people are like, how old are you? Especially when I was like 18 traveling and stuff at conferences. They're like, what? Um, it feels good. And I'm very thankful for it um, because I, I realize other people don't think and operate the same way. And of course, people can change who, how they think and how they operate. But I, I think for myself, I'm like, if I didn't think the way I do, or if I never decided to really think for myself and get into business and do all these different things, would I be who I am? Would I do what I do? Why would I be as successful as I am? Um, so I, I think it's, it's a, a cause and effect both. It's because I decided to be this way. I ended up leading this incredible journey. Um, and of course, as per the podcast, I just have an immense fire in the belly to be more, do more, because again, my back and we came from like, we were very broke. Like either we had no cars at one point, our, our family was in someone else's basement in welfare apartments. We had no vehicles. Um, we, my dad had to sell our TV. We had everything taken away. Um, me and my brothers, you know, often we'd share, like all three of us would share like a box of macaroni and cheese, all three of us or four of us, you know, if someone else was there too and stuff, yes. But yeah, we, we grew up so without anything. So I always wanted more. I think that also got ingrained in my personality is that there can be so much more. I see the stuff on TV, of course, you know, especially my generation, you see the stuff on TV, you see people traveling, doing things. I'm like, why can't we have that? And I always wanted that. So it is, it is almost for me, surreal to have these things because we didn't grow up uh with anything like this and a real quick uh example of that like i don't know there's two there's two main examples but i'll give you one um where i come from uh, hitting minnesota it's it's an okay town there's about 10 10 000, 20 000 people uh there are no you know like really nice houses there's maybe one really really nice house in town and it was only recently bit built like the rest of them are just for when i go to other cities like i'm like what what is this you know this is crazy then when i was around 18 best week of my life i got flown uh because i did really good in the affiliate marketing business of mine i got flown to cabo san lucas all expenses paid and we stayed in the mansion like this beautiful i think it was like a 10 or 15 bedroom mansion it was sitting on the ocean on mountainside of course um and it had an infinity hot tub that went to infinity pool that went into the, like was into the ocean. So like those experiences may be even more like this is possible, this kind of stuff, like you can live this kind of life. Cause I never even imagined, like I thought it'd be somewhat successful, but not like be able to even see these types of things. It just, a, it's a mind blowing. And it's a, it, it's a, it's a thank God moment. Like, thank Everything turned out great. And I'm glad I, I took the effort to go on this path because it all has worked out very, very well, thankfully. It's amazing, isn't it? The, the, what these things experience. And I was going to ask you, I mean, coming from that background, do you think there's an expression I particularly like is, you know, your voids are your values. So sometimes if lack of money and you're growing up actually become right. a value set. I mean, is that something you follow? Do you agree with that? I, I do mostly agree with it. Because I, I, think, I think for... It, it depends on the person because as you know, either people, A, they replicate what they didn't feel. So for example, some people were maybe um, had a really rough background and then they, that's how they treat other people. Or like you're saying, they then value this thing and now they use it for good. So I would say for me, yes, definitely. Cause of course somebody used it for bad and I used it for good. And I think for example, my brother, uh, I, I have three brothers. One of them is extensively, um, thinking about that we just talked about the other day my brother josh um he's like you know i actually he's like i want to be rich like i also want to be very wealthy and i'm on, I'm on way with it way there to what i consider being wealthy he's like you know i want to be really wealthy because of how we, we grew up i just again when you when you come without you want that extra um so fortunately we made the decision and that's why i like being on podcasts and just talking and talking with people in general whether it's on the street is there are so many people making these decisions in their lives on whether or not they're going to pursue a dream, build a business, uh, take care of their kids better, any of these different things. And when you can actually connect with them, find out what they have going on and try to influence them to keep doing the good or start doing the good versus, 
well, I had a rough background. So now I, I treat my kids like garbage. You know, there's two different avenues to go down. And I, I, I'm very thankful I went down and chose to go down that one. And I, I want to keep doing my best to influence others to go down the better path because that leads to you being more of your true self because your true self isn't the angry self or, or the upset self about your past. It's the one that accepts it and that moves forward for sure. Isn't it funny? Cause I mean, it does bring up a, you know, that question of nature versus nurture, you know, is it right. You take four brothers, you take the same circumstances or anyone else. I mean, outside of your family, but you know, why is it that people react differently? Some people see it as, you know, pressures for diamonds. Other people say it's pressures is bad planning, you know, and it just, it's not a good thing. Right. So what makes it different? Do you think? Uh, this is a debate I have in my own head all the time it is I you know I think about even whether it's with politics or with, with with poverty or with many different things and like is it is it how I was raised is it myself what I had within myself um I is it people who influenced me like I, I had some great influences while we had a really rough background we also had really good parents we had amazing parents best dad and mom possible um highly ethical um i I have came to the conclusion i think more of it i think is nurture and a lot of it has to do with your ethics so for example because of my ethics i work hard because of my ethics I, i think ethics comes down to a lot of it and again but then you can also say ethics is either taught or it, it is learned or it is ingrained. So it's a mix. Cause for me, like I was saying, because of my ethics, I make sure I work hard because of my ethics. I also make sure I try to provide for um, my girlfriend, myself and our pets and stuff because of my ethics. I make sure I don't lie because of my ethics. I make sure I, I try to do what I'm supposed to do, what I think I'm supposed to do in this life. So I think that it ties to ethics heavily. Um, and also, I think ties to work ethic. Work ethic is insane because it's, it's not like, and I don't mean work ethic as in putting in hours. I mean, work ethic as in doing what you know you should be doing and doing that consistently over a period of time. Because if you, if you just do the, what I've discovered, if, if people usually just do the bare minimum of what is usually good for them, their life will most likely get better for a long time. You know, of course, things happen, but it will most likely keep getting a little better there. So to get back to your original question, it's such a tough debate. I think it's more nurture and influence because people can be changed. You know, people can have a moment and just go, oh, I was wrong about this the whole time. Now that doesn't often happen because people are very stubborn. But um, for example, like, like when I had that uh, experience in Cabo San Lucas, that really made me go, even while I was, I was becoming more successful, I was on that journey of getting on the up, up, I guess I would say, I, I, I had the wow when we were, we were sitting in the, the pool and I'm like, this is crazy. So I think that happens, that change happens when people either get a good or bad experience that hits them and that makes them have to make a decision to move. So it's really influence, how you're raised, and then once in a while a little bit of dumb luck but it's mostly the other two dumb luck doesn't have much of a factor in my mind it's it's always interesting isn't it how people get to where they are and as you say i mean what, the principles of how we live by i mean whether it's dogged persistence you know, determination stubbornness mm-hmm. whatever it also you know comes into play and and then as you say luck is maybe the maybe luck is maybe the, the touch paper that actually takes it the rest of the way but right 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 you know needs that foundation foundation to make it happen right Right, totally. And I think, I think luck is more of what's the word for it? What, you know, the, the reaping and sowing. Luck's the little bit of, and again, luck could be horrible because you did things that you weren't supposed to that then reaped bad rewards. You're, you're going to get the rewards in some way or another, just this is how you reap them before. So I think that's, of course, there's luck, luck. But I think also some of that luck is also just being consistent enough and doing the right things usually something good's going to happen in some way. Karma, luck, whatever you want to call it, it usually hits at some point in some way. No, it's always interesting, isn't it? So to talk to us then about your business career. I mean, where, where did it all start for you? What was your initial concept and really take us up to where you are today? So it started out, uh, basically, my dad influenced it heavily when we were moving out of kind of the, the poverty situation. My dad also turned to while he was working to starting an online business. And I 
again, I'm, I'm very close with my family. So I would often just sit there and watch him for hours, just do what he was doing. And then I had the idea, again, doing whatever I just want to do. I'm like, I saw there was blogs and there was different things that were going on. I was reading to gaming at the time. So I'm like, well, I can create my own gaming blog. Cool. So unbeknownst to him, I went and I created my own gaming blog, um, which actually I was getting subscribers and I was actually creating articles. I was doing like almost proper like article writing and stuff. And I was 13 when this all started, 12, 13 around there. Um, and then I actually went to school and convinced my teacher. I've always been kind of a persuasive little fellow. I convinced my teacher among, I've convinced my teachers in many different things um, to teach the entire class how to start their own blocks. So for, I think it was multiple few hour sessions. I got the teacher to bring us to uh, the computer lab and I walked into exactly what I did, how I did it, yada, yada. That was the, the very beginning. And then throughout, I believe 13 and 15, I kind of dabbled a little bit. Um, you know, I wasn't super serious about business, but I was more just, maybe I can do more things for myself, especially maybe, maybe a downline starting business. So I started getting more and more into it around 15, 16, getting closer to college. I was a straight A, all honor student, top of my class. I could probably could have went to any college I wanted uh, pretty easily. And I was like, well, I don't want to do the debt thing because I know college has a lot of debt associated with it. Plus, I don't really want the college. I wasn't like a kid that partied a lot. You know, I was I was pretty secure in my thinking. And I didn't really go out a lot. I was just trying to be a really good kid because I loved my parents so much and wanted them to love me too, which they did. Um, so I was like, well, I don't think I should go down the college path. I should just maybe do my own business. My dad's doing it at this point. I believe he was doing it full time. You know, he didn't have his job anymore. He hurt his back and stuff. So maybe this was just full time. And then uh, I started getting 15, 16, had my first job, the only job I've ever had for the only nine to five normal job. I worked at Walmart for six months to fuel money into my business, uh, failed miserably, lost between like two and three grand, which at the time, two and three grand was like all the money I'd earned, um, put in the business, failed miserably. And also at the time, I was also denying any help from my dad because I wanted to do things on my own because I want to think for myself, which is the only error of the way of thinking for yourself is while thinking for yourself, you should listen to some input from people who really do know what they're doing, regardless of the field, business, uh, relationships, personal life, friendships, you know, you name it. Um, so I ignored him said, Hey, don't tell me what to do. He'd even come to me like, I have some really good. And I'm like, no, don't want the ideas. I'm doing it my own way. Failed miserably. Uh, tried a few more things, didn't really work out. Asked him for assistance, some places to learn some stuff. Started really, really learning a ton. Um, and then around 16, 17, 18, found way more success, especially in affiliate marketing, heavily affiliate marketing. Um, past 18, I started moving into consulting, started moving into some freelance work, like website design, SEO, uh, copywriting, uh, email marketing, especially. Um, and then now, right now, more success, traveling, some speaking in there, started writing books. It started kind of ramping up, thank God, uh, which is great. And then it, now we're in between three and four businesses at once. I have freelancing I do. I have consulting, which I'm moving more into heavily. I still do affiliate marketing. Um, and every once in a while, there's something else that creeps up on my agenda to take care of. What is it about affiliate marketing? What, what, is, it, what is it that really sort of appeals to you? I think it's the original ease of entry because unlike a historical business that you start on your own, whether it's you're selling digital or physical products is you don't have to take care of any of the support really. You know, you don't have to create or manage the product yourself. You don't have to really most of the time do any of the upselling or downselling. You can just send traffic or send people to one place, you know, at the simplest form. Now I do affiliate marketing a little more complex now, but the simplest form, literally you have your affiliate link, you create content, you can send people to a page, they buy. That's it. You don't have to take care of the rest of the customer journey, do anything else. And I do suggest for anyone wanting to start a business, I do suggest that you, if you are interested in starting a business, which I believe running a business, a successful one is one of the most difficult things anyone will ever do ever, because it is 24 seven on your mind. If you're doing running it properly, it's always on your mind, mostly um, at some point of the day. Um, and it also is very character building, I think, especially if you fail many times, which is wonderful because you actually learn some things. Um, I think that affiliate marketing is the easiest of entry. And I think that 
there are also so many different, you can sell toilet paper, you can sell books, you can sell anything on Amazon, anything on Walmart, both have affiliate programs. Like people post about all the time, think about it too, this is a, an important point I wanna make. People post about all kinds of different products and services all the time on their profiles across all social media. Why not get paid for it? When you share the Yeti microphone you're using on a podcast or you're sharing Oh, this really cool mug you bought from uh, Charlie's Mug Factory. I don't know. I'm making stuff up. But you name it. Why not become an affiliate program just for, I think every person should do this, for Walmart and Amazon. You can become an affiliate for any kind of product that you use that you actually like or, or love. I have my camera next to me, my Canon camera next to me. You name it, anything. When you post about certain things, just include an affiliate link. Maybe for most people, you know, if you do the average person who, I think I just saw statistics that the average person has like 600 bucks in their savings. If you sell a couple hundred dollars in a year, that gets you a little bit farther at the end of the day. Or you build into a real business over time. Now you've got a ton of extra money. So affiliate marketing is ease of entry. I keep talking too much. Ease of entry. Um, it is also uh, very little management compared to other businesses. And you can sell literally anything. And it's also mostly free. Like the, to get into affiliate programs, most of them are free. So it's pretty sick. <laughs> what do you think it is? I mean, is it that, you know, because affiliate programs, is it a case of, I love that thing where people say, you know, it's my ideas aren't new, but what they are is unique. And I always mm -hmm. find that really, really powerful. So, I mean, is that what it is with an affiliate that actually you can find a unique way of viewing the opportunity uh, or the unique, unique way of viewing that product and then your audience or who you right. can well, then resonate, right? I think there's two things with that. One, I actually, I do believe that things that are unique sell better. They always do. Like if you have a unique approach or a unique perspective to, on how you sell or, or where, you, where or how you, whatever you sell, um, that works out great. But I also believe in, there really, to me, isn't market saturation. Like, like, like there is to a point, there is, well, there's going to be a lot of competition in many markets. There totally is. Some have less competition, some do, but you never find, I thought about this the other day. You never find a business that lacks leads. There's always more customers you can get. No one, no business has ever run out of customers ever. So the unique perspective comes in is where, okay, there's never a lack, but there is so much competition that it takes more advertising dollars and it takes more messaging to get in front of people, which does cost you more money, which is why there seems like this. And there is market saturation, but in a different way to me. Um, I think that... Um, the best way to be successful in affiliate marketing or really selling any business is, is like what you're saying is unique in how you sell it. But what's more important is in the follow-up, is in the follow-up of how you sell it and the process you bring people through. So for example, in affiliate marketing, most people just bring people to the sales page to buy the Canon camera. In my affiliate marketing, like for example, there's a launch, there's a launch happening, uh, a deal chowdhury, by the way, shout out if he hears this. Adil Chowdhury, very successful affiliate marketer. He is giving away two Mustangs. A red, I believe it's a red and blue Mustang. Straight up. And he's giving away around $50,000 in other prizes in this affiliate contest. Huge affiliate contest. It'll do millions of dollars in sales. Um, so in this, um, one, his promotion. If you want to look at one of the most successful promotions ever, take a look at what he did. He spent lots of money but it is amazing. But so, so I'll get back to how I'm going to promote this. The average affiliate creates maybe a sales process for it or just sends people directly to buy a product or service. I'm going to create a full funnel, an opt-in page, a bridge page, a landing page, a sales page, an upsell possible flow. I'm going to write three or four different email series for it. I'm also going to create between five and six different sales pages for it. Because for example, what most people don't understand in marketing and sales is that one is truly customer oriented. What that means is in any audience you're talking to and with, there are a variety of different personalities that relate to a variety of different things. So for example, I'm very logical thinking when I see like an offer product or service. So that's what I base my decisions on. Some people are more emotional. Some people want to see Stats, statistics, figures. Some people want to see a story. Some people want to see the benefits. Some, you know, people want to see different things. So when you send someone as an affiliate marketer or any business person, you send someone the same offer for the 20th time. If I see the same exact offer the 20th time and I see it the 30th time, is that going to really make a difference in buying it for you? Probably not. 
you know, the, the, the fifth, the 10th, the 15th, the 20th, 30th time. It's not going to, nothing's new to me. Nothing, you're sending me the exact same messaging. It's not going to work the 10th time I see it. What you do in any affiliate marketing offer, and why I, I'm, at, I'm saying that I create all these different sales pages for it, it's why I build up this, this process for it, why I'm having all this email marketing involved too, and follow up and all these different things is you have to relate to these different, the different kinds of personalities and types of people and how they relate to messaging in your audience. So for example, for any offer of any kind, and I suggest doing this for anyone who owns a business, you should have four or five different sales pages for any product or service. So if I'm selling a camera, I want uh, a, a video sales letter or, or a sales page covering the story of how the camera was created. I want one about the company. Uh, I want one about myself. I want one about the benefits of the camera. And I want one maybe covering bonuses that come with the camera. You want all these different things. And of course, what usually people do is they put it all into one. They put it all into one sales page, all these different things. Great. Have one that covers all these different areas, but then have one specializing just in the journey of the camera and what it means to own a Canon camera. I'm like an advertisement for them. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying is you need to offer different perspectives in advertising, in how you follow up, you know, in all these different things. For example, I just did some consulting uh, with a good friend of mine, Antonio Bofanuzo. I hope I pronounced his last name right. Um, he owns a, a company called Hosky Media. They do amazing uh, ad creatives, like really funny. I don't know if you've seen Dr. Squatch, Dr. Squatch soap or, or any of those other advertisements. They're hilarious. They propelled the companies forward really fast. Anyways, he does really good ad creatives. And for him, you know, he told me what he was doing and how he was operating and they have follow-up going on. They're doing organic outreach and like, oh, how are you following up? Are you offering bonuses? You know, on the third email to a company, are you offering them a special deal? On the fourth one, are you offering a discount? On the fifth one, are you including this as well? Are you doing these different things, relating in different ways to keep incentivizing and making new things for your customer to go, I don't care about the deal. I don't care about the discount. I do care if this comes with this. Now I'll buy. And that's what you're looking for is in one of these inclusions of additional uh, deals, discounts, incentives, you name it, which of these things are going to hit that audience member? Because for each one, it's different. So that's why you have to have the variety and you want to use all that at once. And that for affiliate marketing or any business does way better. Uh, and for this, I mean, I, I mean, it makes sense. Right? And I've seen it in previous examples where the same product, but different shop fronts, right? So it's right. some people like the direct approach. Some people like the different color. Some people like that, that. too. <laughs> we, we used to, we had a, an e-commerce shop and, and same thing. It was the same products, but presented in, in a different niche. And, and we right. would have had customers because we'd do a slightly different delivery mechanism to try and build metrics, right? See which mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't. And we would have customers saying, listen, can you compete with this other one? Which is like, well, that's also our shop. <laughs> it's the same one. <laughs> that's also us. So yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, not that they know because the average customer doesn't know, right? Is it right? Is that, is that the kind of detail you're looking at? I mean, is it a test and try try it, fail it, you know, see what the metrics are bring back? Is that is that what's leading you? Uh, I, I think yes. Uh, and I'm metric. The metrics are going to show it. I think every time I've tested this and I've done this in my businesses, it's run very very well. I mean, literally. For example, say there's this affiliate launch. I'm probably going to do this. Like today, I'm going to do this literally after I get off the phone with you or off, off the call with you. I will shoot, for example, maybe a video in my shower. And I will put that on a sales page talking about the launch, talking about the product that's launching. And, you know, I've, do, I've done videos in the middle of the night where I pick up the phone off the ground and go, oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I've done videos with my head in a dryer, all types of different things. And... I think whether it's whether it's different storefronts or whether it's different, just different messaging, it could be the same exact video with different copywriting too. Is it, yeah, it just gives a different perspective on what is being offered. And it's the same thing with relationships. It's the same thing with uh, businesses. It's the same thing with friendships. So for example, if I'm trying to have my girlfriend go to, uh, there's a really nice restaurant in town here very expensive i'm usually really cheap but i don't want to take her out there well let's just say she wants to go to subway instead and i'm like no i don't like subway that much i think it's mediocre at best but i want her to go i forgot the name of this restaurant i always i'd plug it um i want her to go to this restaurant if i keep saying 
well, this restaurant has the best food. Well, she might not care about the best food. She wants bread. She wants bread, 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 bread. She loves bread. I go, okay, well, when I go to this restaurant, I'll make sure I get you the, the, they have this amazing, I'm also a food guy, this amazing, it's like a lobster uh, slash sour cream slash like cheese dip. It's like, like artichoke dip, but with lobster in it. It's amazing. You know, this bread that dips into it. It's fantastic. Anyways, they have that there. So I could, instead of just saying the same thing, come on, it's going to be really good. Remember, they have that bread dish you like that you dunk the bread in with the crab. You use different things in any offer because we're always making offers to people and to try to convince them to go to this restaurant instead of that one to make this deal on how we're going to raise our kids and say this one, you know, you name the situation you're making, you're really just making offers all the time. Marketing is always being used. That's why I love it so much. Um, you got to present your information in different ways. Uh, and another, another thing too, bonuses. You want to include a bonus in personal life? I don't want to take the kids to the park, honey. You do it. I'll, I'll give you a massage later, you know, or I'll, I'll make dinner. You, you use that and you have to be creative in personal life because often people they do do it sometimes, but if you really hone down and use it a lot more, like I use it quite a bit in my relationship, it usually works out really well. Include some bonuses, include some discounts, includes all types of stuff. You'll, you'll work things out a lot better. What is that for you? I mean, is it the understanding the person? Is this understanding their, their core needs or their core values of you know who they are? Well, what are you trying to appeal to there? Uh, right. I, I think it's one. It's just been in my nature, needs for nature. It's been in my nature since I was really young. Like I've always, I've always been kind of persuasive or like have been able to like get what I want, not like a manipulative way, but get what I want. And like, because I've been able to do these things and okay, well, how else can I structure this thing to make this work out? Cause in my mind, I think what it is for me is for me, there's almost literally always a solution in any situation. There's some way to solve a problem. So I think it's also really good problem solving skills where there's always some way, especially with people, people, like you're saying, where then the customer understanding is, or the, the people understanding of people is, is I know what this person wants. How can I get them what they want while also getting what I want and find a beneficial meeting? So I think it's because of maybe as well, I'm trying to think back to maybe there's, there's gotta be, there's usually some back in someone's childhood that relates to it. I think maybe it's, it could be because of my parents arguing a, a lot in wanting to resolve problems that I just discovered my own psyche of that. It could be that it could be uh, as well. When I like would me and my brothers are always competing, always trying to find a, uh, a way around something or whatever. Um, it could be that we, uh, of haggling. We've had to haggle for, you know, food for ourselves on, on, on dinner, what you want, what I want. I want that breadstick. You don't get that breadstick. Other things um, could be having to do with that, but I, I do think it's a, a one side of knowing how to relate to what other people want. And again, you get everything you want by helping others get what they want as well. So it's, 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 it's a two-sided good thing. So if you understand how to do that, you can, in your language and communication, work things out usually by addressing both issues. Um, so that and combined with, I've naturally always been a heckler slash just trying to work things out. So I've, I've been creative and have had to have learned to be creative in many different ways to try to figure out what's going to make this situation work. And again, it applies. Usually everything's connected in some way or another. It applies with business relationships. I've had with friendships, you name it. There's always a workaround of some kind. And again, it also comes back to, I think the fire in the belly of me personally, I'm like this again in everything I do. So if it's business, if it's chess, if it's chess, I'm really good at chess. I will play you in chess. I hopefully play one day. I love chess. Um, I want to be the best chess player. If I, I do also a game a lot. If I, if I play my video games, I want to beat the game at the hardest difficulty and be the absolute best at it. And I think that for at least me comes back to, I have such a passion for experiencing life because so many people, Again, growing up, it all relates in some way or another. I think growing up, I saw so many people, including even us at the time, not actually experiencing all that life has to offer. So I want to, I want to go all out and experience everything I can, everything I can. Um, I think that's also what drives it. Well, interesting. I mean, you, 
how how would you define then success? What's what's the metrics that you're looking for here? Because you talked about your ethics, you talked about you know really sort of the methods in which you're doing it. I mean, what for you is the ultimate? What what's your purpose here? What's the, what is the success for you? So I'll give two things. One is what I think success is, and I'll give secondly what my purpose is. My purpose genuinely is I love people, so I want to give and help and work with as many people as humanly possible. Because to me, there's, there's nothing better in this world, for example, than making people smile and happy. Like, like if I'm out and about, I'm usually making everyone laugh. I'm always the person that's trying to have the best time. It's why I'm really myself because I just want to have a good time and make everyone laugh and really enjoy themselves. So I want to, in my own life, my, my kind of goal is to lead a successful, happy life so I can help others also lead a successful, happy life. Because that's what, that's what matters is in life. If you're going to go through this journey, being happy, or at least mostly fulfilled, mostly happy, because you should be happy all the time. There's gotta be issues. There's gotta be something that's going to happen. There should be adversity needs to happen. Um, but I think that, you know, if you can live at least a somewhat happy life, you know, life's going to throw curveballs, you know, family deaths and things are going to happen. But if you can lead at least a, a somewhat fulfilled life and help other people do that too, it makes the world a better place. It makes the world a more happy place. It makes the world not not like it was back then. Again, it, maybe it's relating is when I was younger, there was so much crap going on in my own family with the, with the divorce, with us being really poor. Uh, I was bullied heavily uh, throughout high school as well. Uh, high school slash a little bit earlier in high school. Um, most of the kids didn't like me, as I said. Uh, that has to do with it, I think. And so I want to spread happiness i want it sounds so corny to me but it's true it's it's just how i am um i want to give to people and help people make their lives better and then what i think makes people fulfilled is making progress some kind of little progress because for example in business what you remember usually more than anything else is your very first sale like you hear people talk about what's the most important thing you did uh you, like you hear frank kern talking about frank kern's like well he he said many million dollar days because that first sale, it makes you go, ah, this stuff works. I can actually accomplish something. And I think same thing like when people are losing weight, it's, oh, I lost two pounds. Oh, I lost three pounds. I used to work out a ton. I need to get back to working out. I'm in pretty decent shape, but I need to work out again. When I was like, oh, this muscle's popping a little bit. Oh, I can lift five pounds more, 10 pounds more. Those, I, I think making progress is what makes people fulfilled and makes them happy. And I think that, that's what people should chase more than end result. Um, while end result is amazing when you get it, which I, I, I disagree because most people are like the end result isn't what you want. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I want the end result 100% of the time. You know, I, I want to do X, Y, Z, speak for whatever events or do this, that I want that. But I think what does fulfill more is making progress because those little progress without the little progress marks, you don't really want to move forward. It's why I think, for example, a lot of people are depressed. I think it's because because of lack of seeing results in certain areas of their lives that are important to them, they then don't feel fulfilled because they don't feel fulfilled. Of course, they don't feel good. So then they're depressed because in their relationships, in their, their financial area, maybe with some friendships with their family, they're not making progress in any other part of their life. So it's natural they're depressed because they should be because they're not making progress. So then when people get out of it and they feel better, it's because, oh, this area of my life got a little bit better so then when people usually some people get out of depression is they see oh each of these areas of my life is getting better and better what changed is just they were seeing a little bit more progress in each of those little areas of their life and that's why i think drives happiness i think it's what drives people forward is, is little progresses they make you feel a little, a little more fulfilled a little more a little bit more confident to then do more things to get more of those results i think that's a huge part of it too is that I've also, I think this tied back to kind of why I am and how I work is I I've also been very confident usually, or because I, in many, because I also am so driven in everything I do, I usually excel at because I put everything I have into it, which then fuels me because I do everything I do and I see results with it. I then become even more confident in that thing, which then drives me to again, propel forward in other aspects of life because i think most things are connected to in each area do more be better etc that's it is fascinating you know how we can 
you know, I suppose what what motivates us, and and is it is that an external motivation and internal motivation as right. well? You know, because we can get that. It's like if if I make them feel good, then they make me feel good, and quid pro quo, we're, mm-hmm. we're all better off, right? But then you sort of go, well, I could shorten that journey by if I just do what I want to do, and then right, you know, right, oh, right. You know? So what's but I like that what you were saying previously as well about you know that aspect of you know sometimes it's it's the change, it's it's the despite doing a million dollars a business, it might be the first sale. That's right. the best because that's the point that you prove that you could do more, be more, have more than you had before, right? right? It's, is, is, is the, the juice in the change? Is, is that what it is? It's, the, the juice is in the change and then also in the, pers- this is another thing too, in the perspective of the change. Because, because again, um, some people even view some success as bad. Like for example, oh, maybe the podcast got X more downloads. Some people look at that as, oh, now I have more work to do. Oh, now I, now I have to take care of even more people and make even more people happy because I have an even broader reach. I think it's also a perspective on things. Uh, so for example, uh, and I hope they hear this because they, they, know, they know I feel like this about this. Uh, we went traveling one time. I went traveling with my dad, my stepmom on this trip to Cabo San Lucas. And I was sick of them. I was sick of them because they kept complaining, which, which normally they didn't. I think it was just, just a matter of the circumstance. Maybe they're a little bit more irritated or whatever for the summer. I don't know. They were, they were like complaining. We, we were flying to Cabo and it was like a little bit extra work because, you know, you have to get in two, three different planes. There's a few different more preparation you have to make, whatever. And throughout the process of us going from place to place and getting there, they're complaining a little bit extra. And I, I think we were like halfway through the journey. I'm like, guys, we are flying to Cabo San Lucas, spend time in a mansion, which we have never done before. Let's just enjoy please let's just enjoy the journey sure this is whatever but we're going to cabo uh, imagine in cabo san lucas and again i think it's just a matter of circumstance or whatever but again it's a different perspective for me it was this is a one of a one of a lifetime potential for most people one of a lifetime opportunity we were also we were not just in that infinity pool infinity hot tub with music and we were also being served unlimited margaritas and food which was fantastic uh, <laughs> unlimited margaritas which is great um for me it was like we we're having this one of a kind of experience to me doesn't matter how long it takes to get there it could take us an extra two days i don't care we're still getting there at some point i know we're going to get there um so it's also i think a matter of perspective of what's happening because then some people also as well in making progress go oh it's just a little bit of progress where I think the true hunger in the belly comes from whatever happens, positive or negative, you turn it into something that is good. So for example, I could see my YouTube channel, for example, a uh, drop in viewers. And that makes me go, Oh, that doesn't make me, that doesn't make me go, Oh, my channel's down. And you see go, Oh, I should do more videos. I'm not doing enough videos. I need to take more actions to get this back up. And that's how I think it's a very, difficult mindset like i don't always think like this i'm nowhere near perfect i'm not don't nearly think about this stuff in these ways as much as i talk about it as i should i think that adopting this kind of mindset and having this hunger to always just progress forward is best it is difficult to maintain but i think doing it does lead a more fulfilling and life that can achieve more um so i have a saying that kind of goes with this I have two really good quotes. One of them went kind of viral. By the way, Justin Timberlake's wife retweeted one of my quotes. So kind of a big deal. I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, I have a quote. The first one is aspire for progress, hunger for success, and strive for greatness. Which just means each of those things, reach for more, reach for the best, reach for all you can. And then I also have another quote, which ties in exactly with what we just kind of said is, your attitude is not defined by your life. Your life is defined by your attitude, which means what happens to you in life doesn't dictate how you feel and what you do. How you feel and what you do dictates how your life is going to be. Um, so I think that is, is your attitude and perspective on what is happening, negative and or positive, then affects the decisions you make. And then those decisions you make then affect everything else down the line. So I, I, I've been trying to work with my girlfriend on this too, is I think more people just need to stop. When you're thinking about anything, it could be 
the someone you hate. It could be the dog that barks nonstop next door. It could, it could be anything. Um, stop yourself in thinking. Breathe. One of the most important things my mom has ever taught me is to literally just. <sighs> that has helped me in so many situations you cannot believe where I get because I'm so passionate. Also, I, I I I can sometimes get to anger quickly. Not all the time, but some things like if I'm really passionate about something, like I'm really frustrated. I'm really frustrated about this thing because I want it to be better, right? Um, and I, I think breathing, stopping yourself, thinking. Okay, is how I'm thinking about this. Is my perspective on this one that's going to make things better or make things worse? And then if it's not the one that makes things better, okay, how can I think about this to make things better then and move things forward? Because moving backwards does nothing but cause pain and pain is not really that enjoyable. <laughs> and what for you is, I suppose that, that aspect of, as you say, taking the time to breathe, but I mean, what, what, what skills or what things have you learned over time that actually, you know, gives you that focus, that determination, that drive? What, what is it that helps? That some people may have, some people may not, or something you can learn, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, is it down to attitude? Is it down to principles, gross ethics? Is it down to like the 5 a.m. club? Or what is it? Do you right. Uh, I, ooh, you mean like waking up early and grinding, which, which is cool, which is cool. <laughs> um, I have such a, I, I think I'll decide now, I'll just decide right now on the podcast. It's more of optimization of how you act and be. Because, for example, like for my age group, you could consider me very successful. I am in many different terms. And again, I don't want to say this in like a very, I don't want to say this in like a, in a way that's like braggadocious or like, because I'm not someone who like, I'm the best at everything. Um, but if you were like to go outside looking, okay, let's take a look at different areas of life in relationships, in personal life, how I manage my own mind, uh, financials, all this different stuff, you could put me pretty high. I'm doing pretty decent for myself. And I think what, what, what has done that, it, not my background, because my background, I might be leaning more towards uh, nurture now. I might be leaning more towards nurture. Not my background, my, my background, if most people come from my background, end up being not much. Um, so my background, it's not my environment. Um, it's more of, well, in, nurturing in my environment um, and also self-optimization. So I think it's really realizing of self that you are in control of these things. That's the first number one thing is because so many people don't believe they have any, any impact on their life. Any, maybe, maybe minimal. Like maybe I can uh, work on my relationships so. Maybe I can help my kids some, but they don't really think like, like financial freedom. Most people don't think that's even really reasonably within their grasp. Most people don't realize or think they can become a millionaire. When in fact, if you look at statistics, I think 10% or 30% of all people will move within the millionaire uh, definition within their lifetime. People don't realize, especially in the United States, we have the most financial mobility ever in the history of mankind. Um, this first thing is, realizing that you can do these things. And I, I think what helps people realize these things other than themselves, if you need an outside influence, because I think some people maybe do need that extra push from outside because they're so, they're so in their head, they don't, they don't have an outside experience. They don't have an outside influence to make them think a little bit differently. Listen to like Les Brown. Anyone who's listening to this, type in Les Brown, one of the most impactful speakers to ever grace this earth look up tony robbins again P tony robbins has controversy around him i don't know why oh, look up tony robbins he donates millions of dollars er, like tens of millions of dollars every single year to feed starving kids so whatever he does he's pretty nice <laughs> um look up tony robbins look up a speech by them start looking in different areas of your life for some kind of motivation and even if you don't want to do that look at the person who you respect most in life and think about why you respect them the most. It could be your dad. It could be your grandpa. What do they do that makes you respect and love them so much? Most likely it's because they're a really good person or they're someone who's really hardworking and try to replicate that. Say, maybe I can't be like this famous person or this influencer, this leader, but maybe I can be like grandpa. Like my grandpa's also grandpa's really good dude, 
really good. He gave the shirt off his back. You hear that all the time. Look at the person closest to you who you know, who you really look up to. How can I be more like them? That, that's the closest example, the easiest example to go off of. And just take a little bit of action, make a little bit of progress steps to be and replicate some of the things they do. Your life will infinitely change for the better. And then I think the second thing is optimization of yourself and realizing, and like you're saying, and like I said, just stopping and thinking and writing. You know what people don't do that I wish they would do more of? Writing down stuff. How many of you listening, do you write down your financials? I have a book. I have one sec. I have a book behind me that has all financial records for my business written inside of it. I will not open it for you. <laughs> um, how many people do you think write down just basic things like, what am I going to accomplish this month? How am I going to optimize my health? How am I going to optimize or make anything better? That's the first thing is stopping, realizing things can be better, maybe reaching for some outside influence. Number two, find some outside influence to help move you forward. Number three, taking record of where you were at and where you would like to be. And I swear to God, write, write it down, write it down. Because in my business and in any thing I have almost ever achieved important in my life, I have written it, written it down at some point. For example, like when I designed, I have this program I'm launching. It's not even close to ready yet. People, you can go to it, but it wouldn't do anything. There's also, most people aren't going to be even able to use it. Uh, it's called Marketing Mastery Elite. It's a, a company I'm launching to train organizations, sales teams, their advertising teams, their, their uh, follow-up teams, every HR, SEO, anything a company's doing, I will train every single one of their departments. So in the creation of this, that idea, which is for what it was before, it was more of just an entrepreneur, every skill set you can imagine, copywriting, marketing, sales, whatever. It was before it was what it was now. It was this smaller platform. Before that, it was an even smaller idea that I created with my friend in, in uh, eighth grade. I don't know what grade I was, but I was 15 years old. Remember when I told you that I started that business? It was the first business I launched. Before it was the first business I launched, it was the idea that I had written down in a pool, a pool side while my mom was at work. We were, she was on, it was more towards when things were a little bit better. Um, I think I was 14 at the time or 15 when I came up with the idea originally. Um, she was on a business trip and they, they paid for like the hotel for her. Um, it wasn't a business trip. It was a trip for... She worked for Women's Advocates for Family Peace or something like that. And um, uh, they paid for the hotel. And in this hotel, I'm like, how can I think of a business idea? So I started thinking, writing down things. And it started out this company I'm planning on launching, which hopefully with, with some blessings and with a little bit of luck and with my efforts, it will do billions and millions and millions of dollars in sales. Um, I'm gearing towards tens to hundreds of millions, which we'll see. We'll see how it scales and optimizes. But anyways, it all started from one little writing and that one little writing on a piece of paper has lasted me if it was around 14 i am 24 now 10 years so along with that in many other parts of my life like i always as well um real quick story my older brother ricky uh because i used to game so much probably around between the same ages 13 15 i gamed all the time nonstop. my brother one time came into the room and goes you are going to be a miserable horrible person throughout the rest of your life and you are going to accomplish nothing and you are going to become super fat. And he left the room. This is the only really bad instance. This has ever happened to me like that from a family member. And I was like, oh, why did you say that to me? But anyways, that drove me to literally the next day. Then sometimes bad, see, bad things can turn to good things. I started swimming laps. We had a, we had a, we had a, it was a small little pool, but this is one of the, th the luxuries we had is my dad had this pool that he somehow got that he would fill up once a summer. Only once a summer was this sucker going to be filled. And it, it took some talking to be like, dad, just fill up the pool, please. Fill up the pool, please. And he'd be like, fine. He would fill it up. Um, I started swimming laps. But anyways, in that aspect and other things that have happened to me, I always have written down in some way or another what I want. And also then, once you write down what you want, 
what are the actions that you can take daily on a regular day or maybe one, you know, weekly to make that thing happen. And then by circumstance, usually you will do some things to make that better. Like for example, diet, even if you, again, this is why small progress is so important. Even if you don't follow your diet exactly, maybe you're not eating sugar. Like for me, I'm on, I tell people I'm on a carnivore diet, right? I'm not, I'm not. I eat other stuff. I was on it really good for a while, but then I stopped. But at least most of the time, most of the time, I eat very little sugar of any kind. I eat less carbs. So maybe I'm not doing things perfectly, but I'm doing some of what I know for sure will make things better for me. And over time, maybe I get an extra five years. I'll take an extra five years. Um, so realizing, I'll try to wrap this up all, all into one, realizing you can do a more. At least maybe think about you can do a little bit more, just a little bit. Two, find an outside influence or one very close to you that is doing some of what you're doing. And then three, write down and of what you want to do better, where you're right now, and then what you can do to make you get to where you want to go. And number four would be just do some of it. Do some of it. Whenever you think of it, do some of it. And things in your life will get better in your business, in your personal life, in your relationships, in your health, you name it. And then the last thing that does is number five. I know I'm, I'm horrible. I'm horrible. I keep going. Uh, number five is that will then influence other people. And then you, by working on yourself and making yourself happy, influence the world and make the world a better place. That's really powerful. Very powerful. You know, and tell me for, for you, what, what guides you going forward? I mean, do you, do you undertake meditation? Is, is it, is it that writing down? Is it brainstorming? Is it, you know, guidance? What, what, what sort of guides you for it, John? To gauge me for it. One is financially. I want to get to, I've always debated this because, because uh, as I've grown up, like I, I could do what I'm doing now and I would be free for the rest of my life, which is wonderful. It's a blessing. I love it, but I don't want that. I want to be able to donate tons of money to like help organizations. And I want to be able to give to my family. And you know, if, if, if someone, someone's struggling in my family, I want to be able to provide for them. I want to be able to, if someone needs $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 without even going like, ah, just hand it to them if they need it. If they need it and they're going to use it respectfully. Um, I want people to impact and give the world better. So for me, I gauge on my, my success on my ability to be able to do those things in the future. And also as well, I want uh, you know a, a better place to live, of course, and a better place to live. But I also, after growing up some, I don't want like a huge mansion. Too much to clean, too much to clean. So I've also kind of came back and some of those things that I thought when I was younger that I really wanted, like I was like, I want a huge mansion. I want this, this, and that. I'm like, well, I just want a decently sized house. I want a pool. I want a hot tub, place to barbecue. That's it. Um, I don't need nothing else. So I'm, I'm learning to also sometimes feel a little bit more fulfilled with what I already have. Because that's an important thing too, is appreciating and feeling filled with the things you do have because there's people with a lot less. Um, so for me, I gauge my ability to be able to do those things. And also something that is my selfish thing is I want to be one of the most well-known marketers and business people in the world, at least down at least for like 30 years after I die. 50 years after I die, someone else can be popular, but I want to be one of the greatest. Um, so in order to do that, for me, I need to launch a company that I can either run or sell at nine figures, at least worth a few hundred million dollars. So that's why I redesigned my idea to build something that was capable because I thought about, well, is this really capable, my current design of reaching nine figures? Well, not really. Um, so this new design, the price point around it, uh, it will sell for between 25 to like a few hundred thousand dollars per customer. Because if I'm training a company's entire sales team, for example, if I'm working with an agency, like, like, like right now, if I was to work with the agency, I can pretty much guarantee I can pretty much double their profit within a few months of working with them pretty easily. Cause I know how to optimize their pricing, optimize their offer, optimize their sales call, uh, optimize their marketing, their follow-up, a few different things. So if I can do that and the company's doing a few, uh, let's say they're doing uh, agencies doing a million dollars a month, they can afford to pay me 50,000 if I can double that, double that profit or at least 1.5 times that profit or even 25 
uh, it increases by 25%. That's still more than worth it. Um, so I need to design and create something that is capable of scaling so that I can have that impact. And how all the people can relate to that is you take a look at what do I need to do to accomplish? Say, for example, I wrote down where I'm at now, where I want to go, the actions I need to do to at least get there within a reasonable amount of time. Um, what, what do I do if I really, really, really want to say my goal is to lose 100 pounds? Well, what if I really wanted to actually lose, this way you take things a little farther, 150 pounds? How can I optimize what I do and do even more to get to a point where I can really reach that second level or next step or go even farther and do that? So then you also, what you do is you optimize, when you figured out what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, you optimize how and why you are doing it. So for example, if I'm going to work out every other day, maybe then I'm going to decrease the time between my workouts, improve, increase the intensity of my workouts and increase the weight, stretch myself further. In business, you do this by, if I'm going to have my team who does outbound uh, emails and LinkedIn messages to companies, how do I shorten the time period in them in between them sending messages, how do I make the messages they're sending more uh, optimized to convert? And in each of the actions you're doing, how do you optimize these actions to make them more efficient? Um, so that's how I go about getting to the point of where for me, I'm gauging my, my, not my worth, my ability to provide for not just my family, my future family and my close uh, friends and family, but also for all the people throughout the world. I need to do things that are well beyond where I'm currently at. So that drives me to go, I need to do a hell of a lot more. I need to optimize what I am doing and I need to even become a better person um, to make every step of that journey a little bit easier for myself as I go through, um, go through it. I love that. I mean, and then of course, then you, you've actually, you've created a couple of books as well, right? You, you've actually put a lot of these lessons. Talk to us about that. Yes. You're talking about the, you the books? yeah yeah so the books again my my purpose is always just to help and give to people and i created the books because i want to uh, well for a couple of reasons one of them is i see a lot of like for example like there's some really well-known books that are really good there's also a lot of well-known popular books that really suck so for example uh there's a book called uh it's a it's a bestseller it's a New York Times bestseller. I forgot what it's called. It's it's like um I think it's the the five minute work week or something or, or it's or it's the one that's like uh um optimizing your schedule or something. It's, it's a really well known book. If I showed you the cover, you'd probably recognize it. And to me, maybe it's just me, but I I hated the book. I was like, how is this a book? Because it was so basic. It was mostly it was this much storytelling, this much okay storytelling with this much actual strategy. And optimization and things to do so to me i'm again i'm always like how can we make things better i'm like i want to create books that are so filled with actually actionable good strategy and things that people can actually do in their daily lives so i want to make i want to make the best books possible and again my fault i didn't really promote them at all um both books i did like a small social media push I, I sent them two times to my email list, never pushed them again. But again, it, for me, it was more of, I just want to make the best book. So when I was writing, I was writing. Um, so yeah, I put into the books, for, I, I wrote one um, called Finally Wealthy. You can find these on Amazon. I will plug them. One's called Finally Wealthy. I'm remembering their titles too, which is great. Finally Wealthy is basically in your personal life and in your business life, how can you fine tune and optimize every aspect for for example your financial life how can you decrease spending while still getting the things you want how can you invest properly how can you um spend money better because people don't realize they can spend money better for example spending money on assets or just things that the bare minimum if you're gonna buy a watch or you're gonna buy a bunch of watches at least buy a watch that at least grows in value you know versus buying a useless watch that doesn't um so there's a bunch of things about personal finances um again i came from a very broke background almost twice i was very very broke and had nothing so 
I know how to do this stuff. I know how to get out of it because I know I'm doing very well. Um, so that book covers both personal finances and business uh, optimization for profit. So I've read many good books. So far, the best business book I've read so far is Alex Hormozzi's, uh, I forgot the name of the book, but it's about offers, creating the best offer possible in the marketplace, which drives growth massively. Um, I read that. And even that book, which was amazing. I'm like, I can outdo this book. And I, I look back at all the other books I've, I've read. I'm like, they only usually teach about one thing. I want to teach about everything and still at that same high level as the single book. So in the, in the book also, I cover basically how to optimize every aspect of your business. So from follow-up to your sales process, to your offer, to uh, your products, to you name it, how to optimize those to make them the best possible or to make them the most efficient way possible um, to drive growth for business. I have another book called 19. 19, which is, which is basically covering the 19 most important lessons. I wrote this when I was 19 as well. I might have actually been 18, but I launched it at 19. Um, it covers the most important lessons I learned in life at the time which go through the attitude, which they, they, they cover uh, welcoming and wanting adversity. That's another thing I too, I'm a proponent of challenges and problems are good. Just bring them on. Um, Cause then they do a lot for you. Um, and this covers, I don't know all of them. I should memorize them, but I don't know all, but it covers a lot of really important stuff I learned and also goes through some, some stories, real life stories, whether it's, well, it's whether it was like my experiences of like, no, no one liking me and bullying me a lot as a kid, whether it goes through a little bit of um, some of the traveling experiences that I've had, goes through a bunch of different life experiences I've faced and things I've, I've always been a watcher growing up, a watcher of people and a watcher of what's going on around me and a kind of a mental record keeper of how people are and how they treat others. So I've watched that a lot as I grew up. And because of that, I, in the storytelling and in the lessons I'm also teaching at the same time, I'm going through what I saw what I experienced. And a lot of the book is really how to think about things, just how to think about things better to make life better as we're going through this. Um, because again, I saw throughout my childhood, um, for example, my dad, my dad had some friends that led some really rough lives, some really rough lives. And some of them still do today. Um, and again, just, just in general, I saw a lot of people in my small hometown, a lot of the people in Hibbing, Sorry, Hibbing, hate to call you out, but I gotta. Um, Hibbing and, and surrounding towns too that just don't lead. This is just throughout the world. There's a lot of people who just are depressed or they just don't see a lot of hope at the end of the tunnel or they just, they don't have the drive. To, they don't have the hunger in the belly. They don't have the fire in the belly to, to move things forward. And they just need a little something else. And I, I saw that so throughout the kids I knew, the families I knew, the people I knew, you name it, that I... I'm like, I need to make something that will, even if a few people read it, it'll make a little bit maybe of a difference in their lives, something, make something a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I saw all that. I'm like, I need to make something that can change that even for a few people. And so far, even though it's been minimal, I've gotten very good feedback um, because what I write and create in any format, video, written, training, anything I create, I try to do, is this actually going to help someone? Um, and also if it actually helps people, it also sounds good too. So it's a, it's a win-win. What's, what's your non-negotiables, John? Non-negotiables for, what do you think? Just operate or whatever, whatever it comes down for you. Um, by the way, that's a very good question. Cause I do, I do have non-negotiables. I do have advisable non-negotiables. So one, I, I would say one working with people, um, non-negotiables are if, if, you continually try to help someone and they don't do anything to, to, to move their own life forward. This is also something that Jordan Peterson, very well known. Um, Jordan Peterson also advises, stop helping them. There's nothing you can do. Um, you can keep trying to influence them. You can be around someone. You can still say good messaging, but there, there are sometimes there are people who just are so, 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 very, it's not everyone, but there's a small population that is so, so stuck in that no matter how much you try to help them, no matter how much you try to give to them, no matter how much you try to influence and do everything you can for them, they will keep repeating what they're doing. And it will have to be, a change for them will have to happen within themselves before they will change anything they're doing in the outside world. So for that, you can keep influencing them. 
keep doing things, try to help them. But don't, don't bend yourself over backwards and hurt yourself and hurt your family and do things that are contrary and hurting other people in order to make this, make, try to make this one person uh, do what you want them to do. You have to lead the horse to water. And if it drinks, it drinks. If it doesn't, just give it a map to keep following. And if it wants to follow that map, it'll follow. If it doesn't, it's going to keep doing what the horse want to do. Um, so that's one of my things with people is I will try to help you. I'll try to help you again. I will try to work with you. If after the third, fourth, fifth time you don't, I, I can't let you, I can't help you. I can't, I can't keep risking and using my time and energy and my money to keep helping you if you're not willing to do something. I'm not an advocate of giving up on people, but an advocate of lessening the approach because if you're not willing to do it yourself, I have to spend my time on other people who are going to work on themselves and get them moving forward. Because if I spend all my time on one person, who will do nothing for a really long extended period of time versus helping three people that are all making progress. Am I going to help three people? Or am I going to help one person? I'm going to help three people who are willing to make that effort. Um, that's one thing, a, a very important non-negotiable is you got to be willing to help yourself in some manner. You maybe you're not doing everything, but you're doing some things right. Cause you're just saying you can do at least some things right. Another non-negotiable um, is people who are just, rude who are a-holes who just are not kind don't work with you don't deal with you if someone is again if, if it's one with reason and if, if you can't find reason within them so often in life there are circumstances where you're in a circumstance or event or something's happening where you know maybe tensions rise or or, or something happens and there's an outburst of some kind if you try to again it's almost like if they won't help themselves if someone isn't seeing reason or some kind of, okay, realization that they are wrong or that there's something more to the circumstance. They're not willing to calm down in some way, you know, or if they're not willing to just treat people a little bit better. I don't deal with rude people. I don't deal with people who are just, just mean to others for no reason. If you're not a good person, I, I'm out. I will maybe give you some resources or, hey, I will give one thing of, hey, maybe you should think about things a little bit differently because what you're doing right now look what it's doing. Other than that, I just won't, I won't deal with it because again, you, you have to spend your time wisely in an optimized way. You want, you want to help as many people as possible, but if you spend all your time working with one same single person on one single thing, but you're missing out on 10 other people you could be working with, again, this could be in any way or fashion or, or form, business relationships, you name it. You're missing out on helping these people that need it and want it and are willing to do more. Not that you should give up on the person, but you got to pull back a little bit. I'm maybe pulling also pulling back. Some people need to realize that pulling back on some people is what will get them to. Okay. This person pulled back some, okay. I need to, I need to take their, take their input and make it more valuable because they actually are pulled back. Now it's valued because it got pulled back. I'm trying to think of another probably important, really non-negotiable people who are rude, uh, people who won't change or do anything better for themselves. And I think uh, I want one more. I want one more good one. Um, one more non-negotiable. Um, for people I work with in any form um, is you have to have a little bit of a sense of humor. Just a little bit. You can't be so serious. This is, this is my personal preference. Nothing I have anything against people who are so serious. But again, I, I think life is, I like to really work with people who are, again, even if you smile a little bit, you, you, you give a little ha-ha. You can just enjoy life just a little bit because I, I want to, you know, I will work with people who aren't like that, but I prefer mainly to work with people who have some kind of sense of humor that can look at life and realize that it's not so serious. You don't get out alive, um, that life can be better. It will be better. You know, of course, I actually have, even though I was really young, I talked a lot of people through like some dark stuff um, that came to me because I'm usually someone who talks people through things. This is how I am. I like to help people. Um, I will work with people who are, who are struggling more, but I prefer to look at people who at least, even if they're struggling, they can at least laugh at the situation or think about it in a way that will laugh because life is much more richer, I think, than most people realize when you think about the people who are really, 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 really struggling, who have literally nothing. Like even at my worst times in life, I was still doing great compared to many, 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 many different people throughout the world. Um, 
So that's something that I highly value as well to all say is I highly value loving life because life is only so long. And most people, there are a lot of people who have it a lot worse than you. Even if you have it bad, like you think for people listening, you think you have life bad. There's people who are going through much, 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 much worse. So value what you do have because it could be a lot more damaging. That's powerful, isn't it? Just to, to actually know your standards, to, to set them out there because so many people don't even know themselves, right? They're, they're right. That's, that's, that's huge. Right there. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they can tell you, sometimes they can tell you, you know, maybe what they don't want or the, what they want sometimes, but most of the times they're like, well, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this, which um, by de facto says, surely that means then what you want is the, is what's left. Right. You know, right. Crazy, right. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of people too, you know, like you're saying who, and this affects everything, I think is not knowing kind of who you are or what you want to do. Um, again, like saying, like people know, they know that they need to go to work, they need to provide for the family, but they don't go deeper into what that means to them. How much, how much, most people don't go into how much that means to them. They don't think about how much does my family actually mean to me? How much do my friends actually mean to me? How much does this world actually mean to me? How much does it provide for me? How much does it give? Um, but also because they don't know themselves, they, I think you don't value things as much. Like, because I know, I know who I am and what I want to do. I value everything a lot. I value my relationships. I value my friends. I value my family. I value my pets and everything I, I love. And also enjoy more because I realize how much value it has, because I realize, and I've, I've also advised people too, is anyone should as long as you know, I've said you should write stuff down, you should think things through, obviously, obviously, is people should also spend time thinking about who they are, what do you really want, and why do you want it? And then with when you find out who you are and what you want, again, always kind of optimizing the thing about things. Is that a good thing? Is what you're is what you're doing right now and what you're going after and who you are right now, is that a good thing? Because most people, some people do realize who they are and they don't do anything about it. They go, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of not a good person. <laughs> some, people, some people do, some people, they, they think about, yeah, but they, they, you know, they think about, I don't, they think, I don't care. I, I can just do what I want. But then they keep seeing the same bad things happen in their lives, which is usually what happens when you're a bad person. Um, think about who you are. Think about what you have in the world, um, what you value, and then decide, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Again, this all also ties highly back into ethics again uh, of, what is good because if, if if you're always valuing things that are good and valuable then you should most of the time do things that represent the both good and valuable things and actions yeah it's always a, it's sort of being being in alignment with yourself isn't it i mean so many people present themselves in one way and are another or you know yeah. they talk about what they do in business but then they do them different themselves it's mm -hmm. alignment with self it's about being honest it's full of integrity alignment you name it, right? You know, it's a, not everyone is, unfortunately. Not everyone's got that far. Yet. Yeah, that, that's a big part of it, too, is that, like we went through, is most people, I think, are not, along with, like, you, you're saying you might realize what you want, you know what you want to do, but you're not being yourself. You're not, you're not actually being yourself and not actually showing that to the world. And that's also why there's so many conflicting things happening in your life. I think that's a lot. Of, I think that's most people. Most people tell and show what they are not. They put a, a perspective and, and a, a thought into the world and they represent themselves, especially, especially through social media. It is so frequent. The people I know, because I, I also, along with like personally, I, I've seen a lot of back offices and a lot of backstories. And I know what's going on between like a lot of big marketers, a lot of big salespeople, like in the business world. I actually knocked my table to move things around. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've seen and know what's going on behind the scenes of many people, many like influencers that people follow and look up to that. That is not what's going on. That is, you don't know their profit margins. You don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. And it's because usually it's because of spouting out and trying to make other people happy by showing them. This is what my life is when it's really not as a part of like you're saying, what causes the conflict. So yeah, people should also really also think about who they are and try to be that because when you're not, when you try to put that out into the world, it, it's disingenuous and it, it 
because of being genuine, disingenuous and not honest, it, it causes conflict within yourself and brings it into the world. Conflict within yourself because how can you operate your life right, operate you know your mind right, um, think about things correctly, when you are not being who you actually are? Your, your, very, your very thought foundation is in someone else who you are actually not. You are almost thinking with someone else's brain this, this isn't actually you that is thinking. You are thinking with someone else's head. So you need to return back to who you actually are um, and be that person because that person most likely is, is thinking the most accurately and is thinking the most honestly with themselves. Um, and like, for example, like for myself, like, like what you see, what you get here, and all the same mannerisms and how much I'm smiling and stuff, this is exactly how I am in person. Um, and that's why I think people should emulate more is, when you be yourself, even though you may be afraid of being yourself, you, by being yourself and trying to be your best self, you will accomplish more. You, you will figure out that most resolutions will resolve themselves because you're not trying to be something that you actually aren't. It, it just, maybe nature, nature of not being oneself creates a lot of different problems. Um, you can take a look at a lot of different circumstances. Um, you can like take a look at celebrities. Why do celebrities have such insane issues? Well, it's probably because one, their egos are usually inflated beyond belief. And two, it's usually because they get so into them being this other person that they literally become this other person and start representing that in their actions. Because this is an important lesson for people. How you think dictates how you feel and how you feel dictates the actions you take. So again, if, if, you, if you're thinking about things that are sad, depressing, you usually feel sad and depressing and you usually take sad and depressing actions or you don't take any actions. If you are thinking, and again, everyone in the world that I know of controls how they think. You just don't realize it. You don't stop and stop as we went through stop and think. Um, if you stop and think about a situation or something differently, that will dictate how you feel about it, how you, how you think about it. Again, the perspective you're using on it dictates how you feel about it and how you feel about it then decides how you're going to take actions to resolve it, not resolve it, whatever you're going to do. Um, but yes, 100% people being themselves, it's crazy what they misrepresent and give to the world and not, not do at home. And also I think what they represent to the world, if they're representing something better than themselves, if they actually did, and were the person that they were trying to represent and that they're facading, their life would be better. So if, if that's the case for someone listening, if you're pretending to be this great person, become it. Get the, get the fire in the belly and do what that person would do. Become that facade. You know, often people put, put on a bad persona, but sometimes they put on a good one. Become that good persona if you want. Or, be who, or also as well... To not be to not be fake and false, become that, become yourself, and optimize how you act and think and be, to be and accomplish what that persona, that good persona that you're putting on, would do. So still be yourself. Decide I'm going to be myself. I'm, I'm going to re rephrase that. Be yourself, but do the actions because becoming a better person isn't be, isn't being who you're not it's becoming a better person um which is changing who you are so change for the better and optimize what you're doing to become that facade because it is no, it's no longer a facade it's who you actually are you actually will become that better person it is that you know i love that it's, it's i suppose it's the you know, it's part of its law of attraction right isn't it ask believe mm -hmm. do and it's, it's that you know, set your thoughts out properly, which will then, as you say, change how you feel and you change how you feel and then you change what you do. And, and therefore the, the world's a better place. Well, your world anyway, the, the mm -hmm. world your perspective, right? is a better, better place altogether. It, it all aligns, it all connects together. And I think that yeah, the law of attraction, which is great, I love it a lot, uh, all dwindles down to the action. It's what you think about, what you feel and the action you take. Um, because of course, action is action is the mother of all thinking because action puts into place what you are thinking and how you're feeling into effect. And then again, it's a cyclical cycle, just like how I walked through earlier. Like when I worked my ass off for um, 
to become better at chess. I then saw the little progress steps and results that then drove me to then feel more confident because I felt more confident in it. I practice it more and it's just a cycle. And I think what people need is to start the cycle, even if it's just in a little way, start the cycle by doing a little bit of something. And that will start the cycle of getting more confidence, doing more, feeling better about it. Okay, now I can do even more. Now I can do even more. Now that you're doing more, now I can actually make bigger goals because I feel confident enough that maybe I could accomplish these. And it's just such a better way to think. And it drives the, the fire in the belly truly because I think the fire in the belly, just like all fires start kind of corny, but it all starts with a little, you start with Tinder. You start with Tinder. Just real quick story too. If you are starting a fire, this is completely off topic. If you are starting a fire, start with small little Tinder. On many, many fires I've gone to with friends and family and parties and stuff, people start with a bunch of gasoline or, or a little bit of gasoline and just the big old logs. The logs don't start unless you have small kindling because the kindling cannot, or the, the, the larger logs cannot catch and retain fire long enough in order to keep going. So just like in life, it's, a, it's an analogy, just in like in life, just like in fires, the small little kindling starts and grows. And again, also just like as an analogy is perfect, just like in fires, when you start taking these small steps or just when you spark the fire, it grows and grows and grows and grows. And the cycle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, just like with the fire, just like with anything in life. I love that. It is the, it is the sort of like incremental steps, incremental growth. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what, what, can, what can you do to help people? What, what, where are you best of service? What's the really the sort of your ultimate sort of genius, if you like? If anyone wants to work with me in any sort of fashion, uh, whether it's financially, because again, I'm probably best to serve people, business and personal development, mainly business is my best way to help people. Uh, but really in anything, you want to just chat with me about what you have going on in life. Again, I truly like to help people. I don't have to um, even necessarily charge people money all the time. I just like to help and talk to people. I just like to be there for them. Um, it could be um, financially, business-wise, anything, just either one, reach out to me on social media or two, the best thing you could do that I would also appreciate is go to my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and go to johnweberg.com or johnweberg.com too, johnweberg.com or go to my YouTube channel, look up John Weberg and subscribe. Make sure you watch my videos. I upload almost every single day. Um, watch my content. What I give out in free content, also my social media profiles, also on johnweberg.com, but mostly on my YouTube channel. Um, is like the stuff I'm talking about now, and also, especially with business and other things too, a lot more in depth, even more in depth. Um, that's where you're going to learn from me. That's where you're going to learn best. That's the best format. Again, you're going to notice across all, everything I do, this is the same guy you're going to get. So if you liked me, great. You're going to like me more. If you didn't like me, <laughs> what am I? Uh, yeah, go to my YouTube channel, especially. Watch the videos, watch everything I upload. It's going to be a lot of strategies, advice, uh, stories, uh, self-reflecting I do on there. There's a lot of different things I walk through that will teach you how to optimize your business, your financials, your life, and also keep up to date on what's going on throughout the world. So remember that I also kind of update, like if you're in the United States and a lot, you're anywhere in the world, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of distractions. And I'm, uh, I, I kind of try to walk people through as well, what you should be focusing on in life, um, how to avoid the distractions. And while uh, a, a coming financial ec economical collapse is coming, uh, how to make sure you survive that and thrive during it because there is one coming in that's uh, going to be something to avoid and do good in. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm of that ilk too. It's now it's time to get everything buttoned down. There's some tough, tough yeah. times. So, so um, yeah, that's a whole, whole different ball game. But so tell me, I mean, if you were to try and describe your fire in your belly, John, in one or two words, what, what, what might they be? One or two words. Um, I would do passion, passion, um, passion, because I just, again, I love life so much. I love helping people so much. I love being myself so much. It's really, by the way, it's really fun to be yourself because then you're just, you're just being yourself. It's great. You don't have to fake anything. Um, but also coming at you, I think I should express even more and think about even more is gratitude, gratitude and, and appreciating what you have is the countermeasure to all 
things negative and depression and sad related because it's hard to feel bad when you're appreciating what you do have. It's very difficult. I mean, it's also very difficult to feel bad when you're, you're chasing things that you actually love. Um, so I think it will also be gratitude for what I have, gratitude for what will happen in the future, and also gratitude for what bad has happened to me. Because bad things that happen in life teach you lessons. They make you more uh, capable of dealing with more hard times. Um, so I also invoke all the bad stuff. Bring it, bring it on. Also, I want stuff to happen early, not later in life. Bring it on early. I got a lot of energy now. Might not want to mold it. Bring it all on now. But yeah, gratitude um, and passion for sure. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Gratitude and passion is a, passion, passion is a very strong one or a very common one, you know, but the gratitude is, is not always there. So it's, it's great to hear mm -hmm. that. To hear that. Thank you. Yeah, I think we lack it sometimes. That was John. I mean, what's where's the best people place to for people to go to then to learn more about you? Head into on your website. Go to YouTube, my website, johnweber.com, uh, J-O-N-W-E-B-E-R-G, or go to again YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in John Weber, you'll find me. There's probably some podcasts on there too. You can listen to more podcasts. Uh, this one may be up on there. I'm not sure it could be. Um, and just uh watch as well. Um, there will be a, a big launch coming for my, my program when I do launch it. But there's just jumpingbook.com, YouTube. Um, and again, feel free to connect with me on any social media. If you go to my YouTube channel or if you go to my website, you'll see that there's other places you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Send me a message. Um, just say hi, reach out. Doesn't matter. Even if you want any advice, you just want to chat. I'm open to chat too. Um, and I hope just that uh, I was able to contribute and help people think through some things. And um, I appreciate you also having me on very much. I do. Wonderful. Final message for the listeners then today. I'll end with my two quotes. Aspire for progress, hunger for success, and strive for greatness. And if your attitude is not dictated by your life or your attitude is not defined by your life, your life is defined by your attitude. Love it. John, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. Thank you for sharing, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, too. I appreciate you, and I hope everyone who is listening has an absolutely great day. Thank you.